Breaking news. Mecca, the holiest city in Islam, faced an unexpected storm, causing massive flash floods. What makes this event even more intriguing is its impact on the revered Kaaba, a symbol of devotion for millions. Let's explore the deeper meanings behind these occurrences and their potential connection to biblical symbolism and the second coming of Christ. Saudi Arabia has recently witnessed massive flash floods due to continuous torrential rainfall, particularly affecting the streets of Mecca. The Kaaba, the revered black cube, and the ultimate destination of the Hajj, a sacred pilgrimage in Islam, stands at the heart of this unprecedented event. Annually, millions of devoted Muslims gather at the Kaaba, driven by a profound desire to worship and seek divine blessings. The sanctity of the Kaaba has been enveloped in mystery, heightened by a series of extraordinary occurrences, ranging from violent sandstorms to unexpected floods and even an intriguing sound resonating from the sacred structure. These events have not only astonished the local attendees, but have also captured global attention. The question arises, are these phenomena mere acts of nature, or do they carry deeper, divine significance? In today's video, we embark on a journey to unravel the secrets surrounding the recent events that have reverberated across the globe, focusing on the Kaaba in Mecca. In various cultures, storms hold powerful symbolic meanings. In the Bible, storms often represent God's might and authority. So is the recent weather anomaly in Mecca a mere natural phenomenon, or could it be a divine message? Let's uncover the layers of this mystery together. Storms have always carried profound symbolic meanings across various cultures and religions, finding resonance in the pages of the Bible as well. In biblical narratives, storms serve as potent metaphors, conveying divine messages, human emotions, and spiritual transformations. Let's delve into the biblical symbolism of storms to unravel their deeper significance. In the Bible, storms are frequently employed to represent the immense power and might of God acting as reminders of his sovereignty over creation and his unparalleled control over the forces of nature. A verse from Psalm 29, 3 vividly captures this essence, stating, The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the God of glory thunders, the Lord thunders over the mighty waters, portraying God's voice as thunder, accentuating his authority and supremacy. In an unprecedented turn of events, the holy city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia recently bore the brunt of a powerful storm characterized by strong winds and heavy rainfall. Mecca, home to the revered Kaaba in Islam, became the epicenter of a natural phenomenon that left hundreds in awe and contemplation. This unexpected event sparked concerns among many Muslims about its divine origins. Could it be a sign from God? As believers, we are aware of the signs foretelling the return of Jesus, and intriguingly, storms are often regarded as one of these signs. At the onset of the storm, as the sun dipped below the horizon, the Grand Mosque's minarets stood witness to the unfolding spectacle. The gathering dark clouds quickly obscured the stars, and gusts, possibly exceeding 80 kilometers per h, disrupted outdoor activities and caused damage to structures. However, amidst the tempest, the Kaaba at the heart of the Grand Mosque stood unwavering, a testament to faith resilient in the face of calamity. Emergency services responded promptly, ensuring the safety of both the local residents and the numerous pilgrims in the city for Umrah. Meteorologists, noting the unusual severity of the weather for this time of the year, expressed their observations. The people of Mecca displayed an unwavering spirit, despite the storm's intensity. Many shared images and videos on social media depicting the city veiled in rain, with the Kaaba standing steadfast in the background. This powerful visual, with the sacred structure adorned in raindrops yet untouched, conveyed a compelling message, a call to maintain faith and persevere through life's storms. Despite the storm's intensity, the Kaaba stood resolute, untouched by the forces of nature. Pilgrims, motivated by deep faith, continued their rituals amidst the chaos. It's a powerful testament to the strength of faith in the face of adversity. Reinstating their traditions, pilgrims reverently circled the Kaaba, symbolizing their unwavering commitment. As the city undergoes recovery from the aftermath of the storm, authorities have initiated cleanup endeavors, issuing necessary cautions. 
Meteorologists remain vigilant, monitoring weather patterns in anticipation of any unforeseen developments. The Kaaba, embodying the resilient spirit of the millions who devoutly face it in prayer daily, stands as an emblem of hope and fortitude amid the forces of nature. The Second Coming of Christ Now let's shift our focus to the concept of the Second Coming of Christ. Described as a glorious worldwide event, its imminence suggests it could happen at any moment. As we reflect on these recent events, it raises a critical question. Are we spiritually prepared for such a significant moment? The Second Coming of Christ is anticipated to be an extraordinary, global event, transcending any experience witnessed before, a culmination of Jesus' sacrificial act on the cross for humanity. Navigating through the intricacies of eschatology, we must grasp that the Second Coming signifies not the end of everything, but a transformative shift for humanity, beckoning us to choose Jesus Christ as our Savior. The profound magnitude of this event sparks numerous inquiries. What events precede it? How can we discern its timing? Will its manifestation be visible? Who qualifies for salvation? What becomes of those who have already passed away? How does Satan and his angels fit into this grand narrative? Our assurance of the Second Coming rests in the biblical revelation that mirrors the pattern of Christ's first arrival, a momentous event when he graced the earth as a sinless infant, lived a virtuous life, ministered compassionately, and sacrificed himself for our redemption. This return is destined to be a global phenomenon, prompting a natural curiosity about its timing. Why does God keep the timing a secret? even from angels. The answer lies in prioritizing what will happen and why over the precise timing, emphasizing our responsibility to love, serve, and lead others to God. The Bible highlights that undisclosed details do not impede God's plan in our lives, and their revelation might not necessarily enhance our spiritual growth. The imminent nature of Christ's return, implying its likelihood at any moment, finds support in biblical prophecy. Evangelical teachings, while allowing for some doctrinal disparities, generally underscore the imminence of Christ's return. As Jesus repeatedly spoke of his return during his earthly ministry, his disciples sought to understand its timing. His response, found in Luke 12:40, underscores the unpredictability, urging readiness and alertness. Distinguishing between the second coming and the rapture of the church, the former awaits certain end-time events including the tribulation. In contrast, the pre-tribulation view proposes that the rapture precedes the tribulation, making it imminent. Our salvation, ready to be revealed, hinges on Jesus' potential return at any moment, setting in motion events detailed in Revelation 6, 18. Preparing for this impending perfect storm requires a holistic approach, mental, spiritual, and physical readiness. Repentance and total commitment to God become pivotal for individual and collective salvation. Despite divine mercy offering a chance to return to godly roots, the nation's corporate rejection has elevated God's impending judgments. As Christians strive for personal revival, collective revival in America becomes contingent on aligning with God's will and turning away from rebellion. The plea extends to the church to rise and shine, serving as instruments for revival amidst the impending perfect storm of judgment. The prayer resonates for judgment to lead to restoration and redemption rather than total destruction. A call for overcomers to lead in holiness, righteousness, and victory echoes, urging the church to embrace a stance free from worldliness and apathy. How can we prepare for this perfect storm? As we witness the unusual occurrences in Mecca, the call to repentance and returning to God becomes more pronounced. The storm, potentially symbolizing judgment, challenges us to examine our spiritual readiness and seek restoration and redemption through repentance. We must ready ourselves mentally, spiritually, and physically for what lies ahead. God desires not only individual salvation, but also the redemption of nations, contingent upon sincere repentance and wholehearted commitment to Him. While I maintain hope for the salvation of my nation, America, current signs point towards redemption through the refining fires of judgment and tribulation. God's mercy has granted us an opportunity to return to our godly foundations, but as a collective body, we have turned away, and our national sins have reached a point of divine indignation. Consequently, we face escalating judgments, compelling us, as the Church, to generate a revival that permeates the land. 
The prerequisite is a revival within the hearts of individual Christians, acknowledging our collective rejection of God's goodness and the increasing severity of divine judgments resulting from our own sins. Jeremiah 2.19 emphasizes that our own wickedness will chasten and correct us, and our backsliding and abandonment of faith will reprove us. This bitter consequence arises from forsaking the Lord, being indifferent to Him, and lacking the fear of the Lord. God's will in these judgments is the salvation, protection, and mighty use of His people to manifest His kingdom on earth in every nation. To achieve this, a wholehearted return to God, adherence to His will, and turning away from our own ways are imperative. The urgent call echoes for the church to rise and shine, serving as instruments for revival. Prayers are lifted for the perfect storm of judgment on America to lead to restoration and redemption, not total destruction. Overcomers are invoked to rise and lead the church into holiness, righteousness, and victory, free from worldliness and apathy. Is this a Jesus' good omen? In conclusion, the recent events in Mecca compel us to introspect our spiritual preparedness. Beyond the natural elements, there's a profound message calling us to turn back to our faith. Primarily, it is essential to recognize that God holds control over the weather. Bad weather, defined here as destructive weather, occurs only with His permission. However, it is also integral to understand that weather is inherent in the natural order established by God. Bad weather is a consequence of the fall, and it is unnecessary to interpret every storm as a specific judgment. A theological consequence worth noting is that if God controls the weather, no other entity does. Unlike many ancient Near Eastern deities associated with weather, God's mastery over all atmospheric conditions serves as a reminder to His people about the futility of pursuing foreign gods. Instances such as Samuel and Saul illustrate how God, through storms, emphasized the limited power of human kings compared to His omnipotence. Regarding Satan's power, it is evident that he requires God's permission to bring calamities, as seen in the case of Job. However, this does not prove Satan's authority over weather. While bad weather is not necessarily punishment for specific sins, God can employ it to either punish wrongdoers or protect the righteous, as seen in various biblical examples. Yet, such interventions are rare, and the experience of bad weather is a consequence of living in a fallen world. The people of the Old Testament considered catastrophic weather as divine judgment due to its destructive nature, which they feared and couldn't control. Storms were metaphorically linked to judgment, often seen as a result of sin or divine discipline. However, there's a crucial distinction between their perspective and contemporary sermons about finding shelter in the storm. In the biblical context, God was in control of the storm, and storms were perceived as elements of divine discipline or testing. As the events at the Kaaba continue to unfold, your insights are crucial in unraveling the mysteries surrounding this unprecedented incident. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe for comprehensive coverage and ongoing analysis of this evolving situation. Stay connected, stay curious. Until our next update, this is Jesus Eternal Aura, urging you to delve into the uncharted. Appreciate your engagement, and we'll catch you in the next one.